And hello everyone and welcome to the Cat Rangers second annual golf tournament. We're at the Legacy Golf Course at Lanier Islands here in Beaufort, Georgia. And joining me now is Sparrow Marcioni. <laughs> Did I get that right? Mm, very good. That's the Italian way. Marcioni is... Marcioni. Yeah. Or Marcioni if yeah. we're in Italy. Yeah. So Sparrow, uh, first of all, congratulations about uh, what's going on today. You dialed up the most beautiful, beautiful weather, weather you could have. I know. And it has seemed to have gone very smooth. So so talk about how you're feeling right now as uh, as the tournament gets ready to wrap up. Oh, it's, it's gone phenomenal. Everybody's enjoying themselves. We got great weather. We raised a, a good amount of money for the Cat Rangers to help us with our, our move, covering all the expenses of our new house that had to be built out for us. And yeah, no, it's it's phenomenal. Yeah, it's been eventful for you because not only, of course, have you been, you know, the whole COVID thing came in and kind of changed a lot of things. But during all of this stuff going on out in the world, you guys moved locations. You physically had to get up and move the cats, move everything. Yeah. What, yeah. what was that like? And what, are, are you moved in yet? Completely? We are. We're moved in. The cats are settled, you know. Yeah, we had been in the same location for nine years. So we had a lot of stuff, you know nine years and our landlord sold the house and it happened so quickly we weren't prepared and uh, we didn't even actually have a place we were we knew for sure where we were going when it happened so we had a scramble and we had a lot of people helping us I mean it was very enlightening we had a, a painting company that came in and did a lot of our painting for us and the community came in and helped us do moving Everybody, of course, wanted to help us move the cats because <laughs> mm -hmm. they think that would be fun. It's not, but, you know. So, you know, once, you know, we got through the transition because the new house is much nicer. It's much bigger, much more well-suited to what we're doing. It's got some land with it, so we've got some other options that we can do. And uh, now that we're mostly settled, it's it, it was worth what we went through to, to accomplish it. The new home, is it something that you own now or are you still renting? We had the fortune of meeting a couple, a very nice couple who stepped up in the middle of all the chaos and said, we will buy the house for you because right now in this market, if you don't pay cash, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to buy what you're looking for. And we only had one option. So they came in, they paid cash for the house, they leased it back to us for five years, and we've got five years to put together enough money to buy, to buy it from them in the sixth year. So that's that's our plan. So where is the new location? It's less than two miles from the old location, still in Buford, just off Little Mill, which is basically we were off Little Mill before, mm -hmm. you know. So it was we didn't lose any of our volunteers. We didn't lose any of our staff because we moved too far away. So, yeah, it was it was great. Did you end up getting more square footage? Definitely. You we did. have twice as much space. We have a full medical area now. It's not finished, but that's what it's going to be. So we, we've been able to completely separate our medical from our regular adoption where the cats are free roam. And then we have an area that we're building out as a classroom to help doing classes and things for the community to teach them about spay neutering and how to care for their pets and Things like that. Sparrow, when people come in, come into the house, what will they see? Because I remember the old location, you walked in and it, it, it was furnished just like a normal home. Mm -hmm. that, yet there were there just, just happened to be a lot of cats everywhere. <laughs> Is it still the same way you kind of make it feel like it's just a normal home? Yes. Other than the fact they probably got how many cats there? We have almost 60 right now. Okay. So, yeah, no, it's very similar to the other place in that regard. The concept is the same. The house is just different. So when we moved in, we had to we had to secure all the windows with pet-proof screen. We had to change out all the doors. We had to build out several rooms. The downstairs was unfinished completely. So, you know, there was a lot of work involved. But, um, yeah, you walk in. We still have a fireplace in the main room. <laughs> we don't light fires, of course, but, you know, <laughs> it's there. And then the rest of the rooms are set up so that they can be zoned for the different cats, for, de for their demeanors and but it's all furnished like a house so people can come and sit with the cats. 
So we've been here all day, and we've been uh, taping and recording some of our podcasts, and some of the hosts of the shows, as they've talked about how we're at the Cat Rangers tournament and so forth, and we had one uh, host who was a big cat lover uh, <laughs> who you got to meet. They were asking, though, where do, you, where do you come up with the animals? How do you find them? Obviously, I'm sure a lot of owners oh. are renders. Do you go to other shelters to, to kill shelters and pull them from there? Where do you get your animals? All of our kitties are last chance kitties for one reason or another. We like to work with families that are having crisis, so those kitties are going to be what we call owner surrenders. But when we help those kitties, then we're also helping the family, and that helps the community in the long run. And we, our goal when we're working with them is to try to work out a way for them to keep their pet. But if not, then we can at least give them a way that they know for sure the cat is going to a good place, a good, a good new home. You know, especially when you're dealing with a family that's or a, a pet that's lost its human to death, which is something that's happened a lot over these last couple of years. And those cats go through trauma. So we work with a lot of those, um, but we also work with the smaller animal control facilities, the ones that may only have nine cages for cats, and if they take ten in, then it's, you know, you're the one that drew the unlucky straw. Mm-hmm. So we do take a lot of the kitties from the animal control shelters. And I'm looking at some of the uh, the information here about cat rangers. You've rescued and found homes for over 6,000 cats and kittens since 2010. So that comes out to about 500 a year. That's actually probably more now because it's more like 650 a year. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations to you, Sparrow. And again, we're here at the Legacy Golf Course at Lanier Islands uh, for the second annual Cat Rangers Golf Tournament. You could probably hear some of the golf carts in the background, some of the music playing as well as as some of the golfers getting ready to uh, finish their rounds. I remember last year it just seemed so much more frantic. This year you seem so much more (laughs) calm, like it's second nature to you. Has it gone as smoothly as it appears from the outside? Yeah, the tournament, everything did go smoothly. We didn't have enough time to dedicate at the beginning to get our full 80, 90 field of players, but we were close. So, you know, next year we won't be moving, and uh, and we'll be able to do a lot more work on the front end, and I, I'm sure it will just make it more, more beneficial. The sponsorships have to be done way far in advance, so, you know, that was one of the things that that we weren't able to do quite as well this year because of the move. Yeah. Are you able to put a figure on how much you think you'll be able to raise through this year's event? Well, this one is probably going to be around 35, but we'll probably net 20 to 25 out of that. Last year, we were about 10, 15,000 higher. So it made a big difference being able to spend the time in advance to do the sponsorships and stuff. So we'll be doing that six months ahead of time. And our tournament is on May 23rd next year. Oh, all dates So we already out. know. We already booked it. <laughs> Let's give a shout out to the volunteers, mm. all the people that have really helped you. And, of course, the sponsors. If you want to mention the sponsors, or I can list the sponsors. But uh, we definitely want to give a shout out to the volunteers and the sponsors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We can never do this without our volunteers. Absolutely. How many volunteers did it take to get this thing going? Today we have about 10 on site, but we have, we had at least, we had our almost our whole field, which is close to 50 people out there tracking down all of our raffle ticket prizes and all of the things that you have on the table over here that they're just not about to give away. Yeah. Um, so everybody pitched in and, and everybody took part in some way or another to to help us make this successful, especially Captain Catnip, no, Colonel Catnip, sorry. Your mascot. Yeah. <laughs> Colonel Catnip is here. We, we have a Colonel Catnip sighting. <laughs> let's, let's mention the sponsors, Unknown, Unknown Customs. They actually built, uh, built custom-built motorcycles. And These they have a guys. A couple, couple yeah. here that are actually uh, here on site, which are really cool looking. They're amazing. Uh, we've, had, we've had a couple pictures taken with those. Legends Distillery, and we got to sample some of their bourbons. It was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I waited until you sampled quite a few before I asked you to come over here. Edmondson Law Firm, American Painting and Renovation. I'm guessing maybe they did some of the painting in the house? Actually, no. Oh, okay. But they, they helped us with, we're building a little house called, uh, which is for our ferals, and they helped us with that. Okay. Uh, Rocket IT is here. Atlanta Motorsports Park. CAB Incorporated. E2E Resources. Garrard Group. Southeastern Underdeck and Singing Tree 
are all your sponsors this year. Yeah. A big thanks to them, of course, for, yeah. for everything they've done. Whether it be, what, money or products or whatever they... Both. Both. For all those guys are both cash and, par- and, and in-kind donations, yeah. Okay. So, we've got our third one scheduled already for May of next year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, anything you want to say as we wrap up the 2022 Second Annual Cat Rangers Golf Tournament? Are you going to be here next year? (laughs) (laughs) May 23rd. Are you asking? Yes. If I'm invited. You are. Okay, then we'll be here. Okay. Well, thank you again, Sparrow. Sparrow Marcioni. (laughs) Marcioni. Perfect. So, congratulations, and we appreciate everything you do. Thank you for letting Business Radio X be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you.